In this video, we're going to start working on our Sudoku puzzle solver. Specifically, we're going to look at the data definitions that we're going to use for this program. I'm going to assume that you already understand the basic rules of Sudoku. If you don't, use Google search or something to find a website that explains the rules and just spend a few minutes quickly going over the rules of the game. You don't need to be good at playing Sudoku by any means, but you do need to know the basic rules of the game in order to know what our program has to do. Now let's look at this in some more detail. Here's a sample Sudoku board, and as you can see, a Sudoku board has 81 what we call squares. 81 squares, because it's a 9 by 9 board with 81 squares, and each of those squares is either blank or it has a number between 1 and 9 in it. The board also has nine rows, nine columns, and nine boxes. And the basic rule of the game is that as you fill it in, no row, column, or box can ever have a duplicate number in it. Let's go look at our data definition. So here I've got the Sudoku starter.racket file, which you can get from the website. And I'm running this in the intermediate student with Lambda language because Later on, there'll be some functions where it's convenient to use Lambda. And there's a quick summary of the rules of the game and the structure of the game at the top, because programs should start out with, we originally said programs should start out with a one-line summary, but sometimes you have to say some more. Let's look at the data definitions. Well, the first thing we're saying here is that a val is a natural from 1 to 9. That's one of the values that we could put on the board. And now we're saying that a board is a list of, and I've used a slightly more concise notation here. This is basically a way of saying that this is a list of value or false. So there's kind of like an anonymous one of here. I'm basically saying the board is a list of things and each thing can either be a val or false. And I put a note here that says that it's 81 elements long. And the interpretation is explaining this to me. Let's jump back to our illustration to understand this better. So what's going on is we've represented the board as a list 81 elements long. And you just take a list and just put line breaks in it every nine elements. You could see how that looks like the board. There's the board. We've got it in a single list 81 elements long, but it is representing the whole board. And four and six represent the numbers four and six in the board. And B is just shorthand for false. And I named I named the constant that holds false B for blank. So there's a board that corresponds to the board that we've been using. Just a couple things that we'll need to know for later. You could see that if you want to know whether the board has an empty position in it, you just look in the board to see if you find any falses. If you can't find a single false, the board is full. If you want to find the first empty position in a board, you just look through the board until you get to a false, and that's the first empty position. One last thing to note, here I've got a list of positions. This isn't a board because it doesn't contain just valves or false. It's a list 81 long of positions. And this is showing you how positions work. Positions start at zero. So the position of this cell of the board is two, where the position of this cell of the board is 19. I've just laid it out this way so you can kind of understand how the positions are working. They start at zero and they go all the way up to 80. Okay, that's all we need to know for now. When you come to lecture, we're going to use these data definitions to design a Sudoku puzzle solver.